Hello everyone and welcome to Prehistoric Kingdom's new November Dev Diary. So in this Dev Diary they talk a lot more about Update 9, the Grasslands update and what is to be coming in it, including this, the third and last new dinosaur for Update 9. So without wasting any more time, let's get into this Dev Diary. So update 8 is now available to all players um, and this massive update um, as we've covered in previous dev diaries it introduces of course Velociraptor as well as genetic mutations, rewritten animal lo locomotion, AI and various other features that you can go check out in the game right now. So on to a bit more of update 8 looking at this beautiful scenery for the grasslands theme has a real safari vibe can't wait to um, utilize some of this in game i know i haven't really done a park in prehistoric kingdom before but hey um i've got uh, other things in life so i mean one day i'll do something serious with the game but um yeah so for the past little while update 9 has been cooking in the oven it's been cooking so well in fact that we've actually that will actually be announcing the release date in a few short days as a refresher, this upcoming release will be bringing three new animals to the game alongside the grassland biome. A brand new map set in Tanzania, and perhaps most exciting of all, swimming. So that right there is a very encouraging sign to the future of Prehistoric Kingdom or what creatures we could see in future updates. So um, we'll talk more about the swimming later, but yeah. So the content within Update 9 is super exciting, but we've also got some great tech news to share too. Navigation for both animals and guests will, will be improved with not just smoother pathfinding, but faster pathfinding. We've created a custom algorithm and filtering system that offers a three times boost in performance whenever an animal or guest decides where and how to get to, get to a destination. Players will also be able to signif significantly reduce load times when Update 9 releases, particularly on dense saves with hundreds and thousands of pieces. Impro improvements like these are all part of our ongoing effort to improve Prehistoric Kingdom's performance and ensure we can get the game as stable as possible. So another good look here at some of the scenery. You can see the mountain ridges of Tanzania and a Kamarasaurus just walking through here with a few pines. And I think that's supposed to be a bridge um, over that. Um, river there so that's going to be cool to see now on to the new um, dinosaur a classic of Cretaceous Africa we are very pleased to reveal your final animal for update 9 the magnificent Oranosaurus so this is the mystery species that had this beautiful coloration so it's got blue down the back and the sail and green on the body with a um, creamy underbelly very vivid skin. Um, so we've only got one subspecies, Oranosaurus nigeriensis. So that's just one species, I should say, not a subspecies. But um, yeah, I love how it looks here. It looks absolutely beautiful. And we get a few other good looks at it um, in these following screenshots. So having once roamed the prehistoric floodplains of West Africa, Oranosaurus is best known for its stunning sail made up of tall vertebrae. So these are also known as neural spines that um, are sort of elongated um, bones of the vertebrae that are present on spinosaurs like the um, instantly recognizable Spinosaurus, um, but uh, is also present on Oranosaurus, which is actually an iguanodont. So much like one of its cousins, Iguanodon, this ornithopod also features spike thumbs on each, on, on each hand. Unlike Iguanodon though, Oranosaurus walked upright as a biped getting on all fours when it had to get lower to the ground. So this is probably going to be um, a situation such as grazing and um, I guess drinking as well. Although I could see it just drinking on two legs. But here you can um, see it standing right up on two legs with the um, front limbs tucked in. So um, yeah, this is, a, this is a very nice screenshot. I love those spikes that are on that um, tree though. That looks, looks gnarly. Um, yeah, the Rhinosaurus looks absolutely beautiful. And um, we can see various different patterns. So like this one um, and a few different others. So here we go. 
Get ready to watch your animals splish and splash their way around Update 9. This exciting addition is an extension of our brand new locomotion systems introduced in Update 8, allowing animals to glide or doggy paddle their way through the water seamlessly. So swimming will be available for all animals regardless of their shape or size. Just ensure the water in their habitat is deep enough and they'll dynamically transition into a swim when entering the water. You can see some work in progress in the footage below. So here you see the T-Rex entering the water and um, beginning to swim around. And in the next one we are able to see it going full on prehistoric planets. Um, yeah, we've got a T-Rex swimming in open water. Oh, that's that's actually going to be so cool to recreate in, in Prehistoric Kingdom. I would love to see this in Jurassic World Evolution 2 eventually, if Frontier were to um, add swimming for the dinosaurs. But if we don't get that, um, Prehistoric Kingdom is certainly nailing it here. So every animal will be able to swim, which is, is going to be really cool. So... If an animal were to fall into water, e.g. deleting a platform from beneath them or enter from steep shorelines, you might even catch them briefly sinking and ascending to the surface with buoyancy. No Tyrannosaurus were harmed in the making of this GIF. Yeah. That is, um... My experience playing Path of Titans has really um, shown me water depth from a height. Like, I was playing a Camptosaurus one time, jumped off a cliff at, like, I think it was White Cliffs on the Gondwa map. And yeah, smacked into the bottom of the river. So that wasn't too nice. Hopefully that doesn't happen here with the animals in Prehistoric Kingdom. But um, it could just for realism purposes. So um, down the line, we'd definitely love to introduce some semi-aquatic creatures that can really take advantage of this system. We think that there's a lot of potential there for not only adding some incredibly unique animals, but potentially making the player consider water depth and how that impacts their exhibit design. If this is something that sounds interesting to the community, be sure to let us know. Most definitely. I would love to see semi-aquatic creatures in Prehistoric Kingdom. I didn't think we were actually going to get to that point so fast. But I think we are. I think we can expect potentially to see animals like giant crocodilians um, coming into Prehistoric Kingdom. Or giant amphibians as well. But um, then you've got the next step, which is having completely aquatic creatures. So marine reptiles, fish, and various other animals that lived in the oceans and rivers. But, uh, I mean, the most obvious one to be added is by far Spinosaurs. So Baryonyx, that was confirmed for the original roster, um, that would potentially come in the same update as maybe even Spinosaurus. Because Spinosaurus is been debated as to whether it's coming into the game or not and I, I think if they were to do, try and do some semi-aquatic animals Spinosaurus would be the perfect candidate for a, a update centered around adding semi-aquatic creatures it's like a wetlands or rivers update or something similar um, so for today's final bit of news Prehistoric Kingdom will have a small presence at Tetsucon TetzuCon, so the Tetrapod Zoology Convention, this Sunday in London. Our creative director, uh, Maurizio Morosin, I hope I said that right, uh, I apologise if I did, will be one of the guests presenting uh, Joshua, N is that Noops? Or Nups? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, if, if my pronunciation is terrible there, I really do apologise. So, uh, Joshua's show and tell panel beginning at 10am GMT. Those attending will get to learn more about how we make Prehistoric Kingdom, watch an early screening of the Update 9 trailer. Oh wow, it must be really close to being done, jeez. And hear from some amazing panellists who are part of the Tetsu community. It'll be a great experience. The, up the Update 9 trailer will be released online after the screening at TetsuCon. You can find more information about TetsuCon, including scheduling, on their website. Okay. <laughs> update 9 really is right around, around the corner isn't it wow so that was a lot in a short amount of time and we're left with this beautiful shot of the Aranosaurus in the grassland biome in sort of like a savannah woodland and yeah this, so this looks like to be the female um, of the more vibrant Aranosaurus skin 
So, um, yeah, let me know what you think of Aranosaurus in Prehistoric Kingdom, what you think of Update 9, and the potential future with swimming being added in the same update. But as, as for Prehistoric Kingdom, that is all for now until the end of December, uh, when we are probably going to get um, the next um, Dev Diary, or the next update, Update 9, is going to release mid-December potentially. So yeah, get excited for that. As as for me, I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.